Here we go. Okay. <laughs> well, hi guys. I'm Mark Benito from the Circling Guide podcast, and it is with great pleasure that I have uh, Damien Bowler and Kelly Young with me from the Tribe Group. That's T R I I B E Tribe dot Earth. So you know. And you're both from the uh, southeast coast of Australia right now. Are you both in Sydney? Is that correct? Yep. Good. That's right. Good. Well, you know, welcome to the call. So, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, Kelly, I know very, I don't know you at all. And I've only met da uh, Damien once in a circle with uh, Mihai, which was a very fun circle. And uh, I, went, I went Mihai on the call as well. He's a very interesting guy. Um, We've actually what, circled a few times, Mark. Um, circle anywhere, not for a while, but we have. Circled. Oh, okay. Sorry, forgive me. Uh, see, uh, claim, uh, I'll claim seniority on uh, not seniority. Um, old age on that one. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, but uh, you know, Damien, in the one circle I had, um, I, I learned some things about you that 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 just quite astonished me. Um, and this is the reason that I want to talk to you um, is that uh, you seeded. Say again. Okay. I didn't say you seeded, okay. You you seeded a circling community in Australia that is you know it's going so well that you kind of let go of it and it's it's perpetuating itself, and you know so that's pretty impressive and particularly without any uh, formal training or accreditation. Uh, and the second thing that I you know I went to your site and I saw that you're you're organizing this event in Bali and uh, I hear you have, you know, three or, you know, three or four uh, circling communities in, in Australia, you know, so it's, it's, it seems, uh, you know, to me, this is uh, astonishing. So I want to, I want to tell, I want both of you to tell me, uh, you know, first of all, what is the current, you know, what's going on currently for you right now? What, what is your community? What's the size of it? What's the location? What, you know, what, what do you all you have going on? And then, and then what I would, you know, after that, I would sort of like to get into the history of that. And I, you know, I kind of like to get down and dirty with history, because you know, as we own, as we know, I like to quote uh, Jason Diggs on this uh, circling. You know, AR leadership is a swamp. It's a mm. swamp, just just by the very fact that our own stuff comes up when we when we when we take leadership. So, so on to you. Um, I'm not going to be talking very much. I'm here really just in listening mode. Okay. Mm. So the the question right now is around the current makeup of community. Uh, yeah, community in Australia. yeah tell, me, tell me what you've got going. Um, I'll just give a little bit, bit of a brief uh, background on the community that I referenced before in the, in the call. So this was when I was when living I was... up in the Blue Mountains. Um, the Blue Mountains is about two hours west of Sydney. And so I was living there for a period of time and that was early on in my history when I was just practicing. So I was practicing with a very small group of people uh, on a regular basis. And recently I went back up there um, last year and some of my friends were like, Hey, let's do some group. And I was like, yeah, cool. That, that'd be great. And there was some excitement and buzz around it. And so I was like, Hey, how about we get together everyone we can and we'll run like a couple of nights in succession, like, within a week and a half, we had three events in a row and I wasn't going to be staying. So I, I basically wanted to um, offer a, a score, like a set of practice that could be utilized ongoing. So it was more along the T group style of practice. And um, so a couple of my, my really good friends who are amazing people, I kind of led them through that and supported them. And so this community came formed up and, and then I just, we, we just did this night with a bunch of people and I, I let go into that and then they kept carrying on. And so I've been up there a bunch of times since then and the community is really strong and has really grown just from these people engaging around um, uh, a set of practices and a set of re repeatable practices. Nice. Yeah. And is it T group or is it circling or some combination thereof? A combination. Yeah. So a combination of like authentic relating practices, T group style and circling style, especially as they've been engaging more with the community that Carly's been um, working with in Sydney that we started together uh, five years ago and Carly's been, been keeping going. Yeah. You, you want to talk about that community, Carly? Yeah, for sure. Um, notice that I'm like still arriving in this conversation. I want to just like be present. Yeah, you know, we, you know, we can circle. 
<laughs> that's my intent to have a little bit of circling space here. It's the I best of both like, worlds, right? Yeah, I feel kind of like it feels really nice that somebody's like asking about my journey, like and wants to actually know about it or our journey. So that I oh, I'm I'm utterly it. I'm utterly fascinated, <laughs> utterly fascinated. <laughs> And, and like when we get into my stuff later as to why I'm so, so fascinated by Colin, go on. Nice. And then I also feel like a little bit vulnerable. I'm like, Oh, like <laughs> my story is going to be told. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then it has me feel like, um, just a little bit shy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the story, so Damien and I met, uh, doing the authentic community leadership course run by the authentic world guys i think i only ran that course twice so and so okay Damien, so just just let me stop you for a second who, who ran this course i'm not familiar with it this was decker and robert mcnaughton in in boulder they it was an online course so it was them starting to run some of their stuff online yeah okay, so cool. damien, damien and i met doing that course and damien was in um, Thailand and was just moving to Australia and like reached out and said, Hey, let's, um, let's start doing something. So, right. You know, so we, we started authentic Sydney. So that was in 2013. Um, and then we ended up running, I don't know, maybe six months of, um, authentic relating nights. And then Damien ended up moving up North and I kept on going essentially. Um, so it was kind of a few years basically of running authentic relating games nights and I was running those fortnightly and I had other people that started coming on board too. And so there was ended up being um, another couple of people, Tim and Mary, who the three of us then kind of formed community together running, running authentic relating games nights. Um, And then, and then I kind of started pivoting more to circling. I don't know, like a couple of, a year and a half or something into that but to start with that was like in my lounge room so you know it, there was like this process of figuring out what circling actually was um and i had a friend who'd been to one of the circling europe weekends who was around and she kind of ran a couple of sessions but she was only around very briefly so so then basically i kept circling closed for quite a while it was just like invite only as i was learning what what the practice was and it was also at that point that i started reaching out and getting coaching from different circling leaders and then it was probably a couple of years ago that i started kind of opening it up more and and that was like gradually you know with some um we ran some like closed weekends to start with just once again within invite only community and then i started opening up those weekends more and kind of just scaling it out so it was a very kind of gradually evolve um, and open up you know, who the practice group actually was as I in particular felt more comfortable with, with knowing what the practice was, being able to do it and um, being able to teach it. And so, so now, now in, so then, then I ended up pivoting the authentic relating games nights to actual circling nights. And so I was running those fortnightly and kind of Tim and Mary dropped out of that. That kind of, that was like the beginning of last year. Um, and then maybe halfway through last year, I ended up um, changing it to weekly and running weekly circling labs. Um, yeah, so now now there's like a you know, gradual community forming out of that. You know, we're getting, I don't know, 15, 20 people, um, sometimes less um, to, the, to those nights at the moment. So that's, that's kind of yeah, the journey in a nutshell. Yeah, I just, yeah. I want to, I feel like um, the story I gave was a bit incomplete. So I want to like run my side <laughs> side story and that kind of leads us up to where we are now. So um, Carly and I started that um, event together. And then after around six months, I didn't actually move up north first. I went over to the US and I, uh, I was over the US in the US six months. And um, during that time, I went and did a whole bunch of courses. So I, I spent quite a long time at the Integral Center. Um, I went and learned with uh, John and Sean. I did some courses, uh, some courses with them in Austin and hung out with them. Um, and then I also trained with Diane Hamilton in some of her Integral Facilitator staff and a whole bunch of different courses um, and trainings, but more shorter term stuff. But I did a lot of them, like burnt myself out a little bit actually. Um, and then I came back to the U S uh, back to Australia and 
I was interacting with Authentic Sydney, but like only sporadically, maybe once a month or so I was coming down from the Blue Mountains, which was two hours away and joining in. And most of my time was up in the Blue Mountains. And in that time, I'd formed a very small group and I was practicing um, what I'd learned and just trying out different things with around four or five close friends. And so we, we were meeting weekly and just investigating all these different structures of circling and these different practices. And I was playing with different ideas and thoughts I had around it as well. Um, so we, we formed the community around that. And then, and then I moved up, up to North. So about um, it's probably around 10 hour drive North from here. So up in the Northern rivers near Byron Bay area. And I started studying permaculture um, and then kept to continuing, but really lightly just here and there, I would continue practices or I would facilitate my friends through different, different practices and events, um, until, until we have, um, up to now where I've, where I'm kind of starting to work at bridging the, the two worlds between my studies in permaculture and this relational stuff and a bigger, bigger framework. And that's what's leading Carly and I and uh, a couple of other people to form what we're calling tribe. So, so tribe has a sort of a permaculture slash intentional community orientation. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, partly, partly, partly. Yeah. yeah. But just before okay. we get fully into tribe, I just like, you know, I just, I, I like that we're telling the story and I'd like to like flesh out a few other bits and pieces around it. And you're like, yeah. Um, you particularly, cause you've brought this inquiry around, like, what is it to like, you know, start to lead community and dive into the practice and teaching of it, particularly without, you know, more conventional, I suppose, training orientation. You know, and um, there's a couple of pieces, extra pieces important to me to mention in that one is, um, no, I've done a lot of training, a lot of training, but, but not so much of like the standardized um, circling courses. I've done a lot of integral training. You know, I, I did um, a program called Generating Transformative Change, which is a nine month program, which was actually had a lot of circling-esque type stuff in it. You know, they teach causal leadership. You know, and causal leadership, I think was probably a reasonable inspiration around surrendered leadership, very, very resonant. You know. um, I did embody practitioner certification, which was another um, integral training in line with GTC, generating transformative change. Yeah. Um, and then a, um, a whole bunch of different online courses, you know, kind of some of them integral, some of them coaching. So I kind of, and it's part of it, actually the part of the inspiration was circling. I like, I got inspired by circling. I'm like, right, I'm going to like dive in, in like into integral. <laughs> I got inspired by integral and that. And, um, so, so there was like a big learning journey, definitely. Um, just me engaging in what seemed resonant and, and also what was a little bit more local. You know, GTC was in Australia and New Zealand and, and APC was in Australia or, or online, you know, doing online courses. Um, and, and then the other piece of me that's important is um, to practice, you know, like you know, what, what was important for me in kind of starting to enter into circling you know, as I mentioned, it was this kind of controlled scaling, like not doing something I didn't feel ready for, you know, like having a group that I felt safe to be experimental with and take risks around. And mm. um, so that there's that, that part of the practice, but there's also the people I was in relationship with doing leadership. So one of which being Damien. So Damien and I, like when we started hanging out, practice a lot, you know, and and some of our practice was pretty inelegant, you know. We like we triggered each other quite a lot of stages, you know? and 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 that was actually super super valuable, you know. Like, mm -hmm. and and similar with um when I was doing stuff with Tim and Mary, you know, kind of you know, Tim and Mary and I would were doing weekly calls, um, you know, with, that we kind of do circling together with, and and there was quite a bit of conflict at times, you know. And I've just got a, such an appreciation of actually the importance of conflict. You know, mm. and conflict can be dangerous in that it can, if it gets too volatile, it can cause ruptures and do damage. But particularly if there is like commitment to connection, you know, and, um, and kind of a willingness to see the, see the conflict as being generative. You know, so I, I grew a lot and learned a lot through doing all of these. Um, sweet, sweet. Yeah. yeah. 
Cool. Uh, well, this is it's fascinating. Thanks, guys. I, I want, just want to reflect, reflect a couple of things that, uh, that I'm struck with. The first, you know, first of all, is that it, it, it seems to me that neither of you really set out with the goal of building a large circling AR T group community or whatever. You just were basically moving slowly, just kind of taking care of yourselves in a way, like forming groups that would be sort of supportive for, you know, for your own growth and development, uh, like sort of the closed group concept. And you did this over a number of years, you know, so mm -hmm. this, this has sort of been a long, long learning process. So that's the first thing I want to reflect. Um, and the second thing is, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of imagine that, that you guys sort of like, you know, popped out of the wilderness and started, you know, took a, took a circling weekend and then started leading. And, and, and I'm hearing that, that that's not actually the case that you both, you know, you both have a lot of experience and training. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm completely in awe of you guys because, because my, <laughs> you know, my training consists of, you know, 15 years of therapy and, you know, innumerable hundreds, thousands of 12 step groups and uh, revaluation counseling. And, uh, uh, you know, I just, I just landed in the circling community a year and a half ago. And a lot of people are telling me, you know, whoa, slow down, Mark, you don't know shit. And, you know, I, they're probably right. I have to, I have to say, so, um, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm in, I'm in all of you guys and sort of the, the causal leadership, uh, you know, Kelly, that sounds absolutely fascinating. Uh, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like inter both integral and, uh, T group have been quite influential for both of you. Right. Hmm. Yeah. There's, there's one piece that didn't fit in your reflections for me, which was, um, like the intention certainly wasn't to just jump in and create a large community, but I think there was an inspiration at uh, for some point doing that, you know, I think both Damien and I um, yeah. felt inspired by authentic relating as a culture. You know, and I remember us having kind of these kind of inspired geeking out style conversations of, of like, you know, talking about, you know, the possible world that we could live in, you know, like, you know, what that kind of looks like for parties and what that kind of looks like for dating. So I think there was a strong like inspiration and in which um, pulled us along but, but I also think there was like a sense of, you know, only doing what we felt ready to be able to do, you know, and, and then, and then that's what, where, what you're saying fits, you know, it's like. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm inspired by that. In fact, like, let's, let's take, let's, 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 let's um, address that uh, now if, you know, if you're willing, um, I'm, you know, well, just, you know just, just before we do, I wanted to also right. add to that. Um, yeah, please. In that. Yeah, for me also that uh, what Carly said in that reflection didn't quite fit for me either. I think in my in my makeup, but for a long time has been an inquiry into what what's possible in community, and that was very much the frame we came from. Like we came out of this course, authentic community leadership, and we were inspired around the possibility of having the community we wanted to be in, having a community where there was more depth, more vulnerability, um, more focus on connection between each other. Um, yeah, and that's very much been been the process of unfolding. And I've been really enjoying being with Carly because Carly has a very strong awareness on, hey, let's like be very clear on what we're capable of, where I'm a little bit, I get a bit excited. I'm like, hey, let's do it really big right now. And Carly's like, hang on, hang on, hang on. So we, we kind of like, we temper each other and, uh, and compliment each other in, in that in ways that I really enjoy and have really valued. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm imagining that sort of the quality of your connection it was kind of attractive to people around you as well, that you modeled that for them. Mm, yeah. So yeah. certainly I think, you know, Damien's kind of, his enthusiasm, he's kind of like brought a lot of the impulse to start things, which I really appreciated, you know, like it was his impulse really to start, I think it's Sydney. And I think this has been a like common dynamic for us of like, he'll jump in and like, let's do this thing. And I'm like, okay. And then Damon will get maybe like distracted by whatever it is, permaculture or something. And, and I'll be like, okay, I'm still here, like doing the thing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And it's been amazing. And then, and then like to have this big divergence and then to come back and like, you're still here doing the thing. I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And certainly I think um, teaching together has been an interesting journey. You know, like I'm yeah. um, right from the beginning. I actually really pr appreciated teaching together. And I also remember like our car rides back home where we're like <laughs> giving each other feedback and triggering each other in the feedback. And <laughs> I remember feeling just like, but I was doing what felt good to me, you know, like, you know, just like, 
feeling insecure. And, and it's only, we, we ran a retreat together, well, two actually, last year. And to me, that was the first point of it, like, being like, cool, yes, this is, like, solid and good. That felt really good to me. So, and it, to me, that was, like, a beautiful sign of, like, the journey we've been on in our relationship. Yeah, and the, and the, um, the kind of level of, of trust that's been built up through all of that conflict and through staying in, in the connection through all the conflict that, like, I just feel an immense trust. And, like, and, and I understand kind of Carly's... Um, like his way of facilitating and his way of leading and what he's bringing and what he understands and in the places where he has strengths that I don't and vice versa, I think. And so I really enjoy facilitating with him because like when he, when he starts to speak, I just have trust. Like I just find it very easy to, to like, to co-create an experience. Yeah. It's beautiful. Sweet, sweet. You know, actually, you know, you guys actually remind me of Sean and John who, you know, basically discovered, as you probably know, circling independently with a couple of girls that we're with and, you know, then basically we're circling each other 24 seven for the next five years. And then they started circling Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That there's something to be said for like a really strong partnership to begin, uh, to begin a leadership. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm appreciative and, and envious of, of what you guys have done now. And the same thing for uh, Decker and Brian. Right. That's a very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's let me kind of get into the community vision that you have in a moment, because I find that absolutely fascinating um, how you were speaking before. But just just a little briefly, you know, and nuts and bolts here. Um, you know, Damien, you've done uh, you've done lots lots of courses with Circling Europe, but you're you're not SAS certified. Is that correct? Uh, I've only been to the one training with them. Um, okay. and then I, and then I hung out with them for a fair bit after that training. And then I was hanging out with Jordan before he was, um, part of circling Europe in Austin for, a, for a, yeah, quite a few weeks, good month or so. Um, I mean, just hanging yeah. out, like, you know, having coffee together. Is that what you mean by hanging out? Oh no, I was staying at his place. And so we okay, were talking, right. uh, we were talking a lot, um, okay, for a period cool. of time I was staying at his place and yeah. yeah, I tend to be someone who like, I feel like I learn things very quickly. And so I take something and I think about them and then I just, I like to apply them and try them out and I'll try them out with, um, you know, like, like we were saying before in small groups, I'll, I'll bring in and have a look and see what happens and then, and then readjust. Right. Right. Very experimental emergent yeah. type of yeah, approach. I mean, okay. So you've think, done a couple. I think, yeah. I think Damien's also like really, really good at like, um, somehow just like forming connections like with you know leadership people or people who are like really in you know and to me that's like a testament to damien's kind of enthusiasm but also depth you know and it reminds me of your story damien around like having dinner with damon hamilton and just like and rob mcnamara you know just like somehow finding yourself in these situations where you're like hanging out with the teachers yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Diane, uh, Diane hamilton gave me a lift one day that's my claim to fame yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So back, back to the, back to the question, Damien. So you, you know, you've done, you know, one or two courses with Circle in Europe. Uh, have you done anything at Boulder Integral other than, other than, other than the online thing with Decker? No, yeah. I went to, I went to some of their more um, uh, flagship type stuff like their Lithia. I, I was there for, for the experimental event they ran with Diane and Decker called Seniors um, some years ago, which was amazing. Um, and um, I was, I source team on the AMP program and a few other bits and pieces. But, uh, again, like I, I found myself in those positions, always ending up in the background with the leaders and being able to hear them debrief. Somehow I just ended up with the leaders while they were debriefing, while they were talking about the process that was going on. So I had a behind the scenes view a lot of the time in these places. Nice. Words to the, words to the wise for aspiring, uh, AR leaders. And, and, and how about you, Kelly? What kind of form of training have you done other than the causal leadership that you mentioned earlier? Um, my training essentially I've done through coaching. So I got coaching with John Thompson. I started with John and then I got coaching with Joshua Levin. And basically I listened to all of the circling summit videos and I, I was feeling a little bit frustrated. I wanted like more structure in my circling understanding, particularly for teaching purposes. And I came across as, um, Josh's talk on the sexy structure of circling, which was this um, channel space model that they use in T3 now. And so then I got coaching with him and learn all about the channels, which was like totally scratched that itch. I think it's a great model. 
Um, and then I got coaching with Guy Sengstock and went through all of his model. Did, did then, you do, did you do his year long program or, or just what kind of coaching did you get with Guy? No, this is all like online, you know, zoom based coaching basically. You know, so most of it was one-on-one, -on -one, but then I would like bring friends in as well so that I actually had circling practice with groups as well. Okay. Yeah, but a lot of it, a lot of it was like being circled by them, learning distinctions and then practicing around those distinctions. Like Josh and I drilled the channels quite a lot and I, I really wanted him to do that. I'm like, okay, how would we drill this? You know, like, because at that mode, I was like in this inquiry of like, you know, how do I teach this? And what, you, what is it even is it? You know? so, and that was really nice. And then I started like taking those drills and in my little kind of closed experimental group kind of playing with a bunch of stuff. Um, and then, you know, similar with Guy Sing Stock, um, you know, actually I, I was getting coaching with him right at the point my marriage ended and that was ended up being really good because he coached me, uh, he circled me around that. And then also he could relate to it a lot because he had a similar story in his journey. So that was like quite serendipitous. Mm. Um, and, and then I, I recently did um, C1 and got a little bit of coaching with Decker as well. So I feel quite, quite chuffed that I've like basically coached with all of the primary circling leaders. Sorry. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the serious people among us have done that, which is interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm impressed, you know, you guys have, pretty you know very you know very committed and you know over a number of years as well so cool um yeah what one piece which is interesting to me in that is certainly i think in all that coaching um there was like a little you know i had some people come into practice circling with but it wasn't a huge amount you know so so there was also then this like journey with me teaching circling and practicing it with these kind of these groups here and making lots of mistakes you know i certainly facilitating circles was with a group of people I found quite different to doing it, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then that, that was quite interesting too, you know, just like there's like a whole lot more to pay attention to. And, um, and so that, that part of it seemed really important to me as well, you know, like just making lots of mistakes and, and coming to my own conclusions about like how to handle particular things, you know, particularly if there was tr triggering, triggering in my circles and then like how to facilitate around that. And, and actually, I've also really valued Damien around this too, because our, you know, we've got kind of some different orientations in our circling, and, and I've, I've learned quite a bit about how Damien holds his circles as well. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Nice. The, the other, the final piece I want to add to this is, um, I, I've now I've studied a lot of like developmental theory, you know, all the integral stuff I've been doing, you know, and I, I ended up doing particularly um, studying Terry O'Fallon's model, who who is part of the GTC crew and um i did a five-day course with her in seattle and i'm sorry um, who's that terry o'fallon is one of the principals oh, yeah. in in pacific integral who runs generating transformative change so she's one of the, the kind of the pioneers around you know, quarter leadership based approach but she's also built her own developmental model and she built it she initially started with susan goiter and then built her own model and to i to me, her model is like the most elegant developmental model out there. You know, it's kind of... Um, Ter Terry O'Fallon. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I bring it up is because um, that five-day workshop in particular had a big impact on me and how I, I view circling. And we, we did half a day at each stage of development. And basically, when we got to pluralist and strategist-style stages of development, the exercises, it was like we were in the consciousness of each of those stages when we were doing it. Um, and when we got to the, those stages, it was like we were starting to go into authentic relating and circling style mode. And it had me really kind of appreciating that in, in a way, like circling is just an, a, a form of communication that's an expression of a particular type of consciousness. You know, and, and to me, this is a big part of the value of something like circling. You know, it's, a, it's a form that helps creates the structures that have us express that type of consciousness. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, cool. Thank you. This is, this is very informative. Let's, you know, let's get into the sort of your vision uh, for, for, for where you're going next. And, uh, you know, I'll just sort of reveal my sort of my curiosity about this or my motivation is, you know, I'm hugely inspired. Can I pause by... you? Say again? Can I pause you? Like, I, I yeah, feel yeah, inspired. Sure. I feel a desire to like hear how that last part impacted you. You know, like it seemed very fast that we moved on there. Like, 
this developmental piece, you know, like what, what's, you know, how, how does that lend for you what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, there's, there's a, there's an appreciation and kind of an envy that I currently can't afford to do any of that, any of that stuff. Hmm. Um, and you know, like you're, you're quite young and, uh, you have so much experience and I'm like, hmm. I'm in awe, you know, that's hmm. how it lands, frankly. Hmm. But, uh, you know, but, um, sort of, the, sort of what I was, what I was going to sh share is that, you know, for me, what's really of interest to me is, uh, I was very, very inspired by the, uh, the sort of that epic post by Adam Kutz on the, uh, origins of circling. You know, there was almost, there was kind of this spontaneous emergence in San Francisco starting in the, uh, what early, 90s no sorry early 2000s you know circling is not that old it's really only been around it's been around for less than 20 years and you know mm. so my my interest attraction desire would be to you know either participate or to seed a community that would have that degree of vitality as has happened you know has happened in the early 2000s in san francisco which i think is also happening in you know, circling europe and the circling festivals they're there that are there um, you know, there's, there's active communities in Boulder and Austin, of course, uh, but there's not a lot. There's not a lot of like really dynamic, you know, there's a lot of places that have circling games, you know, AR games and circling and so forth. But, you know, in terms of a really, really, you know, really dynamic community that extends beyond, you know, the, the evenings where people actually become friends and create partnerships and get married and start businesses. I mean, that's, that's really what I'm fascinated by. And, and this is, you know, so this ties back to sort of the tribe culture and the permaculture. You know, I'm fascinated by intentional community. Mm -hmm. So, let you know, talk to me of where where you want to go with this and what your what your inspirations are and what you what you imagine you know to create for yourself in the next five, ten, twenty years around yes. around this modality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Thank you for sharing that. I, I um, it's like I feel you more. You know, I, I feel your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You seem to have just like a lot of passion and care for circling and, and kind of this larger context of intentional community. And, and, and what I hear and what you're saying is this like desire to actually, you know, given the newness of circling, like inquire into like what could have it start to create you know, this type of community. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I'm kind of blown away by, by, you know, what I, what I've seen in my very short, my very short time here, mm. and you know, and definitely intentional community and, and, and Echo Village is is, be is a huge interest of mine, yeah. huge. So let's, uh, you know, talk 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 to me about that. So, um, for me, one of the frames or one of the the perspectives that I have on a practice like circling, and you know, I, I have my own, my own views and they may or may not be agreed with by other people. But to me, I see it as a practice that allows us to develop a set of cat capacities. And those capacities point towards um, something that, I, that I'm just calling relational maturity. And so that's the ability to be in relationship from a mature place, um, from an elegant place. And how do we navigate our way of relating and our way of being with other people? So for me, circling's, circling and, and other practices uh, are quite a foundational piece in, in cultivating this capacity. And this, what I get passionate about this is, as you've kind of presenced in what you shared then, as a resting ground for how we relate with our community so that we have the capacity to deal with conflict, to go quite deep into our desires, to have this really kind of shared depth and connection and like this, this open spaciousness that we find perhaps after a circle or perhaps when we're in a night to have that pervade our lives and to have that pervade the way we are with each other. Yeah, beautiful. So for me, it's, it's kind of like it, the circling practice is kind of like a core practice that has potential to, to weave into bigger, bigger kind of cultural and community style structures. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm totally on board with you there, bro. Okay, go, go ahead, Kelly. 
Yeah, well, the, the, the piece that I add to that is, you know, for us, um, you know, one of the key statements in, in Tribe is empowering collective leadership towards the more beautiful world our hearts you know, as possible. You know, that, that last part we've taken from Charles Eisenstein, that's like inspired us quite a bit. You know, but then the collective leadership part, really, I think a lot of that is, you know, comes from circling style um, inspiration. You know, and so, so to me, what is it to create this kind of culture and this style of communication that fully honors each other's sovereignty, each other's dignity, and, and more than even just honors it, but actually like calls it, but like calling each other into the fullest expression of our power, of our uniqueness, you know, of, of our depths. You know, so, so if we're going to step into this place of being powerful human beings, but not in a way where we're exerting power over one another, but we're like in power together, you know, well, well then we have to have like a, um, a, 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 an awareness of that and an intention towards cultivating it and very solid skills in navigating difference, you know, and, and really a lot of those skills are, is, is in a sense, it's about generative conflict. It's about, you know, if, if I'm going to be a stand completely for you, like I, I'm not going to let you say yes to me unless you really mean it. So I'm a stand for you saying no to me, if, if, even for the things that I really want. Right. Well, well, that that's a pretty high standard to hold, you know. And so, this to me then is circling as a practice is what enables us to step into that kind of place of strong difference together, such that we're going to be in our full power together, you know. And and then, you know, for us in, in tribe, that that becomes like a huge enabler for us actually exerting leadership, implementing leadership, and acting it, you know. And so, so kind of, it's like our belief is that. It's out of calling all of us fully into our unique selves and, and the gifts that we have from that place. And then whatever inspires us, whatever kind of contribution we want to make, whatever lives that we want to create for ourselves, that that's actually what's going to create this more beautiful world. You know? And so it's then that as a foundation that other things can come out of. It might be ecology and permaculture or kind of structures of how we live together you know, in community or, um, you know, economics. You know, so, so then circling culture becomes this foundational piece for how we start to prototype the other elements of, of the world that we want to see. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. I mean, that's a very, um, it's a very compelling global vision and, and I'm, I'm inspired to hear it articulated. Um, and they also want to get to, you know, get, you know, get to, get, get to ground level here, you know, mm. specifically, do you, do you know where you're going? You know where you're going. <laughs> I, you know, and, and I, I, this is a bit of a loaded question because as, you know, as surrendered leaders, you, you can never exactly know where you're going, but if you do tell me, you know, well, specifically I, I, talk to me. about. I would, I, would, I would say that a large part of our orientation is towards not knowing. So there's, there's a lot of space in our vision for not knowing. So there is this call, this yearning, this opening towards a more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible. Our, meaning there's a collective sense of that. We're inviting a collective leadership, meaning that what I know what my heart believes is a more beautiful world, but now when my heart joins with Carly's heart, it's, the vision has become even richer and deeper and more detailed. And then if it joins with your heart and another heart and another heart, another, I don't know what that vision is. I can only know what mine is and what I bring in that vision. So... I find myself wanting to hold a lot of not knowing and a lot of invitation for other dreams and other visions into that, because that's what, that's what gives it the details. That's what gives it the beauty. Mm. And so to follow on what Carly was just saying before around, he kind of touched on the unique self and one of our, one of mine. And I think our biggest inquiry in, in circling is at the moment is how it, supports and how this this is a practice then trickles out into life beyond just the practice how it supports us stepping into our unique self to actually excavate discover and reveal the essence of us that is entirely uniquely us and the way the current paradigm of our society is is that the collective kind of wants to homogenize us in some way we need to come to a set of collective norms in order to, so there's, there's a way where our unique self isn't necessarily called forth in the current society paradigm. So I get really fascinated around what does a collective look like that fully honors 
the individual unique expression of each other and supports it and draws it out. Like what if I completely draw out your unique expression and then what is the collective that's created out of that and mine and Carly's? I, I do, you know, to add a, a little bit more concreteness in, in, in answering your question, um, you know, part of our vision is actually helping people step into that embodiment. So part of it is like, you know, concrete expression of what we want to teach. You know, so we want to bring p people into this and create community doing this. Um, so, you know, we've mapped out kind of, you know, a whole kind of path of teaching, you know, that we're just starting to kind of um, prototype and, and test out. You know, so that that's an important piece, and then the, and then there's a piece around actually a, a platform, an online platform that helps um, curate different types of prototyping that people are doing around the world. You know, so it's like the you know I have this like sense of there's there's like people around the world, and and to me, circling is one angle of expressing this, who are enacting a different way of living, a different way of being. It's like a different dimension. Right. And, and we want to like help actually showcase all of that. We want to like, Hey, you're doing this permaculture project over here, you know, and showcase like the concrete versions of it, you know, okay. Well, can you like help us, you know, communicate what you're doing so that other people can find you and learn from you and invest in you. And, you know, so, so this platform then becomes this kind of connecting hub where we can kind of help cross pollinate people. You know, this, this is a quite a way, you know, but that's kind of a vision that we're, we're working towards. And, and then the final piece that's present for me is, is, is us actually embodying what we're talking about. And so part of it is just really posing this question. What, 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 what kind of world do we want to live in? You know, so like for me, I, I think about that question personally. You know, like I, I, I don't want to have to work you know, in oppressive corporate kind of cultures. And I'm actually just leaving my job next week, you know, as a first step towards that. You know, I, I want to live more, in more community. I want to be, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm, I have two daughters that I'm like having to parent my daughters on my own and being solo all the time. I want like people around me who are going to you know, help be part of parenting my girls. You know, I, I want to live in neighborhoods where we're not all just like walking around, living inside our own little bubbles, you know, where instead we can actually start to see each other more deeply and, and have, you know, neighborhood style community that lets us kind of, you know, sh share what we care about and share where we're in pain. And yeah, so it's, so it's this, it's, it's all of us expressing that, you know, it's expressing, it's, it's doing this collective dreaming. I love Andrew Vinicius stuff on um, we dreaming, you know, like how, what is it to call all of us into, into this this space of collective dreaming and so part of it is in a way is that tribe is for actually each of us the, the, the four of us who are starting to run it you know, how, how do we start to step more into the embodiment of, of and, and speaking of the dreams that each of us have and and, and how those dreams then come together and and Sweet. how we start living them out more and more in our own lives and in our relationship together and the, the relationships with our extended friends and and community as that's forming and deepening. Sweet. Well, yeah, that's great, very powerful articulation, guys. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Kelly, you, uh, you, you sort of brought sort of my next question here, which is sort of the, the, the financials of, of this, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, so, I mean, are you, How, what percentage of your income is coming from transformational activities right now? And are you aiming to, for that to be a full-time job? And, you know, how do you see that happening if, if you do or not? Mm. Well, so basically my income has been coming from doing corporate coaching. You know, I've been doing agile coaching for quite a while now. So, you know, there's still a transformational, you know, um, part of that. But, you know, I'm doing. What, what's agile coaching? Um, agile is a like software um, development. Well, agile has come out of software development, but I, I've been doing it in business and I've been doing it in, in, a, in a telco and a network engineering organization. You know, so really the emphasis for me is about, um, setting up self-managing systems, you know, adaptive planning based approaches, you know, process that can be adaptive, you know, being, the word adaptive to me is like a really key word as part of all this adaptive uh, leadership. You know, uh, so how, how, how do you how do you set up social systems that are able to 
sense and perceive more effectively because a lot of social systems just kind of fly blind a lot of the time you know, and, and then adapt based on that. You know. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. So, but the, the thing for me is um, so far I've been doing it kind of a lot under the frame of the people who are hiring me and that's been a massive constraint. You know. um, so, so I, I still see myself doing quite a bit of that, type of work but i want to like set the frame a whole lot more if you want to do this thing we have to have x y and z you know conditions in place you know actually the leaders who are wanting to do it you've got to start with you guys first and certainly um as one example you know certainly circling is a part of like more of what i want to start bringing in that you know, start actually maybe not completely describing as circling but um bringing more circling style culture and awareness. Into well, well, clear, yes. And you, know, you, you mentioned you've done Decker's C1. Have you attempted or had any success in selling coaching consulting based on what, what I would call invisible circling, which is what I assume Decker does? Um, I, I was still in doing my contract at that point. So certainly I, from that course, started practicing a little bit more within what I was already doing. Um, but it's only now really that I'm like starting to more explicitly consider how to sell that. You know, I've got, I've got coaching clients coming up and I've got a management training that I've um, one day training to build. Um, and so this, this to me is like the beginning of now starting to um, articulate what my view is of like how management should actually work. Totally informed by circling. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that. How about you, Damien? You want to speak to that? Where's, where's, where's the money? Where's the buck, the buck stops where, whatever. <laughs> um, I have, a, I have a pretty light footprint at this moment in my, in my life. I don't have, um, very big overheads. So I've been kind of scraping by and just, and I would like to, I would like to um, dedicate myself into this work. So that's, that's where we're in, in right now. We're actually in a position where we're working with tribe quite a lot in the back end and, and setting up a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of stuff to, to support that as we go, as we go forward. So we've, I, I like to write and I like to produce content. So that's, that's kind of the, the direction that I go go for and then there's also retreat work um consulting work i also work as a permaculture consultant and i teach permaculture courses um which i've started doing in with a more transformational flavor which is a little bit different to way the way permaculture has been taught like one of my one of my big desires about moving into permaculture and studying it was to bridge a bridge a world like i saw a lot of people in permaculture who don't have relational skills and developmental skills and they try and form communities and they collapse a lot of the time because they don't know how to navigate with each other in the interpersonal space. So they, they have a very noble, noble intention, intention to be self-sufficient and to have a light footprint on the earth and to grow their own food and everything. Yet they don't have the, the developmental capacity in their relationship to support it in their relationships at a community level. And then on the other side, the people who are very invested in development, who are doing circling, who are like the, the really awesome people who I love being around, um, don't know anything about growing food. And if we're going to create a new world, like a world where we're actually looking towards dealing with some of the, the ravages to the environment and, and having more health and well being in, in our lives, that's an important feature that we need to do is we actually start to need to take, we're starting to take responsibility for our relationships. We also need to take responsibility for the way we live in the world and how we get our, our basic physical and concrete needs met. And most people don't know that turn on the tap, water comes out. Don't think a second thought about it. Flush the toilet waste goes away. Don't think a second thought about it. Put your stuff in the bin off. It goes somewhere else yet that stuff goes somewhere and it comes from somewhere. And that's a blind spot that's a blind spot in our awareness or our consciousness that I think is really important to fill. So my desire is to start bridging those worlds more as well. Um, particularly in consulting for eco villages and intentional communities setting up. Um, I'm really fascinated by culture, by culture creation. 
So having an under, I understand the infrastructure of how to design a site, how to, um, you know, probably up to a hundred acres I can design from a small scale urban block to a hundred acres or more. I have, I have the awareness of how to design in terms of water, food, um, how to situate the house and everything like that. Yet without the, the cultural space to fill it when we've got multiple people, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a really big challenge. So the, these kind of worlds uh, are worlds that I want to bridge. So that's a big part of the vision. And yeah, then there's like multiple threads. So there's just a lot of threads in those fields that I see myself working with in many different ways of having income to support me doing more of that. So for me, income is just a generative way to just do more of that. This is where, in a way, what we're describing is almost like part of the expression of the vision of Tribe in that, yeah. you know, okay, so there's a, essentially an events business that we're talking about, a training business. You know, we're wanting to like train people. Um, the online piece is more about actually just creating community and helping create this kind of hub. But then, you know, we each have our individual kind of interests. You know, I've kind of got this more kind of corporate angle. Damien's got this permaculture angle, you know, and, and, and we want those angles ultimately to be expressions of the world that we want to live in. So I'm trying to create, like, I want to create corporate style cultures and organizations that are meaningful and you know, don't, not so oppressive and kind of, you know, just having people feel so disengaged and depressed. Um, and, and so the, then that starts to come under the banner of tribe a, a little bit. It's a, it's a, it's a, one of the prototypes, you know, that tribe is starting to, to showcase, you know, and similar with the, the permaculture piece, you know, and, and then how do we actually kind of, you know, the, the, what the kind of the, the vision that tribe is the embodiment of it. How do we step more fully into that to take that into our own projects, but then also use our own projects to help emphasize and land more of the vision of what tribe actually is. And to me, that's a big part of the point. You know, how do we actually gather all of these different people together to promote difference in all the different things that people are doing, but also cohesion, you know, that we can all actually support each other and feed off each other. And, I, and to me, the business model part of it then starts to be similar to, to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I mean, I love, um, you know, and Damien, that you're, 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 you're wanting to bring more relational intelligence into eco villages and permaculture. And I love, you know, Kelly, you're wanting to bring more relational intelligence into business, or at least that's how I would. How I totally. Would. Define, yes. define it yeah. and i love that you guys have this this power this partnership where you're sort of putting out tentacles into the world you know causing transformation it's it's really very very inspiring so we're we're getting close to the top of the hour um i think uh, i'd like uh, you to talk about the bali retreat in case anyone on the podcast uh, is is interested in that what's what are the dates and uh any any appetizing details you want to speak of there Great. The, the dates are 7th to the 13th of April. It's in the, like the most beautiful lush venue in Bali. It's like this um, in rice fields in Ubud. It's like super beautiful. Um, I'm like so excited to actually have, we've got six days. So it's like a really awesome opportunity to have like a really deep dive, you know, and a, and a really important thing for us is embodiment in particular, you know, embodying our authenticity, embodying fully you know, who we are. Um, so, and, and, and in that, what it is that we want to bring into the world, what, what we want to create. So there's this emphasis on embodying who we are, expressing our creative energy you know, and, and what we feel called to express into the world. And then a, a whole bunch of kind of psychological processes around all of that, shadow work style processes, but processes particularly geared towards um, relational style practice, you know, so there'll be some like attachment theory, you know, and, and then how does that show up in our relationships? There'll be some codependence work. So then how does that show up in our relationships and we, where we get entangled? Then what is it to actually healthily express around that kind of stuff where we healthily express boundaries and, and who we are. So circling, we're not explicitly teaching circling, but there will be some teaching of it. Um, but circling is like our primary practice container. So we're going to do a whole lot of stuff and keep coming back into circling to, to practice. And, and actually, I, I think that the, these kind of psychological processes become some of the, actually the foundational pieces of, of what circling even is, you know, how we show up professionally. And then, and then of course, the higher, the higher consciousness part, parts of this as well. You know, what is it to 
step into wholeness, you know, in, in this place of surrender and not knowing and, and trusting life and, and trusting that, you know, all of us have an important voice, you know, and, and how, how those voices come into wholeness. Um, I, I'm actually, there's four of us facilitating it and I think we all bring like really beautiful different pieces and I'm really looking forward to that. You know, Damien's bringing us a lot of really awesome embodiment stuff. And, sweet, sweet. Who are, who are the other two facilitators? So they're the other partners that we have in Tribe. So Tino, Goncalves, I can't pronounce the second name. Goncalves. Goncalves, thank you. <laughs> and then Prem, Prem Kalpa. Um, and so Tina's been involved in Authentic Sydney. I actually met her at a meditation school that I, we were both very involved with Clevision at a very young age. We both started there at 17. And um, Prem, who's a, a psychologist and an orgasmic meditation teacher who brings a beautiful sexuality lens around all of this. She's a really a, a master of desire. As they well have orgasmic that. meditation in Australia. Yeah, Sweet. really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Um, she also has a very deep understanding of codependence, which is um, really, really awesome. Good. Well, it sounds like a, you have a well-rounded team, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And, I just wanted to, to speak just briefly a little bit more to how circling, which is the, the frame of this, this podcast and what you're bringing fits into. So Carly touched on, and to me, I feel like, so it's like this resting practice that we, we return to. And it's I, one of the frames that I often think of in, in circling is it's like a magnifying glass on our life. So it's like we, we get to put a magnifying glass and see how we show up in our life in a, in a way that provides very quick feedback so we have opportunities to experiment and try out new ways of being and receive feedback on that by our relationship with other people very clearly so in the context of a practice in a retreat like this we continue to return to it and allows us to integrate and see how our embodiment of our new insights and understandings land directly in our relationships with other people mm -hmm. so we get to investigate at a high speed or, or high intensity because of the nature of circling the shifts in our way of being. Um, and to me, that's, that's a way that we start to land and ground our own growth and insight process as it unfolds so that it's, it becomes a fixture of our being, not some kind of workshop high where we have an experience and we go away and we go return to our life that we're actually literally transformed. We actually literally come into a new alignment or a new expression, a more mature expression of our way of being in the world. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well, um, okay. Well, let's, let's call this a podcast guys. Um, I'm, just before, I'm, before we yeah. go, I'd like to also right. offer, um, we also, as a, as a quick introduction to our work and then also to invite people if who are interested to engage yes, please. In with our work, we've come up with a five day, um, free email series and yes. it, it just provides like a lens or a flavor of, of the start of the work. And we're, we're following that up. We're, we have got a lot of things brewing in the background that we're about to follow up and release more of, but this is a, this is a great introduction for people to come in. It leads into a group that um, a Facebook group where people are starting to investigate and inquire around their, the way they're relating. So the five day um, email series is called the authentic challenge. And it's more like an assessment of our authenticity and, and a gentle way of, becoming more aware of some of our relate, relating patterns out in the world. And so it gives a guide on how can we start to investigate them in our direct relationships. Mm -hmm. So people can come to that um, by through our, our website tribe um, with two eyes dot earth. So T R W -I, I B E Double I dot earth. Um, and I believe in there, there's a tab called authentic challenge. So if people want to sign up to that and engage more, they're also welcome to join our Facebook group and, uh, and hear more about some of the other offerings as we reveal them. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks, thanks, thanks for that offer, Damien. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording now. If you just wanna hold on and we'll, we'll debrief. Can I just like before? Yeah, I, just, yeah, go like, ahead. Feel, I feel desired for us just like bring our attention to the space of connection right now. Oh, well, before we go. Yeah, before we go, totally. Just come okay. Back well, I'm, I, I I I want to debrief, but uh, yeah, we can we, we can we could just spend a, a moment just connecting if. Uh, yeah, I noticed that I feel feel happy to have like shared some of my passion, you know, what what's important for me, and 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 is actually um a very important 
like symbolic time in a way of like what I'm stepping into that I'm finishing work and I'm starting to put my energy into these things. So that feels really good to me. I feel appreciation for having shared that. I notice I feel just in this desire to like almost slow down a little bit, just like a sense of like having expressed all this energy and then like wanting to just breathe it. Yeah. And I feel curious about you, Mark. I feel like, yeah. hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll go last statement and, and, and we'll, we'll, and then we won't, we won't do a debrief. We're just doing a quick debrief now. That's fine. I, um, I notice I feel myself like, like as we slow down, I can feel like this bubbling excitement in me and then also a nervousness and, and a part of me that's a little bit um, self-critical and wondering if I, if I got enough time to say what I wanted to say, if I did a good job saying what I wanted to say, um, I feel like, yeah, a little bit of uncertainty and, uh, and some, yeah, some fear or trepidation around um, being heard by other people in this and being on the, the receiving end of a podcast rather than the interviewing end. Mm. And, uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like it's like feel a little bit of like like this this balance between excitement and exuberance and like ah uh, like I feel like I've revealed myself. <laughs> and I don't know and and I don't know how I'm going to be received and I don't and I'm not going to get to hear that feedback either and that's like that feels a little bit like a little bit tight for me. Mm. Good. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. Um, okay. All right. I'm, I, I, I've been quite nervous on this interview. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's only my second podcast. Uh, I, I think you guys are awesome. I think it's a fantastic, I think it's a fantastic interview and I, I, I look forward to, to, to re-listening to it because I think there's, there's quite a few things maybe I missed in my anxiety. Uh, there's a, um, it's a, it's a very different for me than a circle because, you know, we're producing a product. So there's a goal orientation here beyond mm -hmm. connection. You know, we really want to serve an audience. So I'm feeling that tension and I was feeling the tension throughout and, uh, you know, to be, you know, in full transparency, there was like a desire for you guys to like to, to be more concise. Mm -hmm. And there's like a judgment. I have a judgment that if you were to cut, to speak less, it would be, uh, and you know, forgive me if this is uh, this. This may have no reality to it, but I'm going to speak it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's like there's there's a lot of content, mm -hmm. and it, I guess I'm imagining just this for both of you, this um, passion to mm -hmm. speak it all, mm -hmm. and you you can't speak it all. All right, give it up. <laughs> so so t so tell me how that lands. I appreciate that you shared that. Yeah. Okay. I love that we're doing like feedback as part of the podcast. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to model what we teach, right? Totally. Yep. I, and, and it fits what you're saying for me. Like I do feel passionate to share a lot. And, um, and I think there is a danger in this like overwhelming people. Yeah. I've had that feedback before. So I yeah, appreciate yeah, you sharing. Me too. I get, I get really excited and there's like, there's such a, conceptual backlog that I want to get people up to speed with. So then I can talk about the things that I actually want to talk about. It's like I have to set so there's the, 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 the stream of context and conceptual context now is like so long that I, I, I don't know what to do with it anymore. It's like, I have to say so many things to get to the thing I want to say. That's, that's what my mind's saying. And now I'm noticing myself going, is that true? Maybe, maybe I could just say the thing I wanted to say. I, I don't know. So mm. I feel myself in the inquiry of that now. Nice. Cool. Uh, and, and I, on hearing that, you know, on hearing that, I just, you know, notice myself having been basically given my withhold. I feel so much more in connection with you both. Nice. And I was like, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting this passion, you know, you, you gotta, so there's so much, there's so much there. And, and years of work, but, you know, mm -hmm. years and years of work for, for you guys. You know, this 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 is your life, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. so ha, you know, hats off. Thank you. Yeah. All right. 
Nice. There's one final appreciation I give to you. Like one thing I've noticed with you is that you're like, you're jumping in like, and you said this thing of like, I'm only a year and a half in and I'm like still learning. And I've got this feedback around people saying that like, have, have I done the training or not? But you're still doing the thing, you know, you're still making the podcast and the guide and then, and, and quite often I think the way to get to where we want to get to is just to do it and do it yeah. to start with, do it badly, you know, because it's yeah. in the doing of it and the doing of it and the doing of it, that will actually get really good. And, and I, I want to like encourage people to do that. You know, and, and you to include the feedback where people are dissatisfied with us, but you know, that, that's how we're going to like actually express our creative vision into the world. And like, I see you doing it. Right. Some of my early circles in the blue mountains were just, I just didn't know what the hell we were doing half the time. It's like, what was that afterwards? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. Well, okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'll take in the appreciation and the acknowledgement and, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, Damien in terms of what you said as well. It's like there's the, the, the tolerance for the ambiguity is so important here. Mm-hmm. So important. So, okay, folks, we'll leave it at that. Many thanks. Have a, have a beautiful day and I will have a beautiful evening. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Thank you. Mark. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. bye.